welcome, 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 welcome. Funny old week again. You know, I've been hearing it a lot. Um, we were speaking off air about this. We are indeed in biblical times, it appears. And uh, oh, I firmly believe it, Mike. You know, you've got yes. somebody you know who's a Jehovah's Witness. We know someone who's a Jehovah's Witness. And um, a lot of the Bible people are actually talking about this. But from the spiritual aspect of things, uh, yes, it does appear that way and so this brings into question a big question mm -hmm. many people speak about the bible as being encoded with information of revelation could possibly be quite true actually well yeah. let me go there mike you know we're into about the 28th edition of the bible and i've read the quran and i've read the kabbalah and they all have an ending, like Revelations in the Bible. Mm. And, you know, we've got to take away the egotistical perceptions or perspectives of the monks who wrote the editions mm. over time mm. and what could have been lost in those translations. But, you know, with what's happening now, you know, I actually put out a post. It was beginning of 2020. Um, <clears throat> and I said, this is a spiritual war. They want us isolated. They want us away from each other so our energy doesn't collide and grow, like that pheromone effect. You know, they want to keep us in that fear factor so yeah. our vibrations come down. So I put out that post on Facebook, oh, God, over two years ago. And I didn't realise how true it was going to be now looking back on it. You know, um, we're still here in Australia. I live in Brisbane and we're still creating these wellness centres for, for quarantine. But there's no quarantine. There's no isolation. So why are they making these facilities which, when we go scary, each individual unit has gas lines fitted to them? <laughs> and then you find out that these facilities have crematoriums attached to them and, you know, they've got them in Germany, they've got them in America, they've got them in Mexico, they've got them in Greece, mm. they've got them in all over the shop in Asia and Middle East as well. And they're all very similar facilities. Who the heck is going to these facilities is what I want to know. Mm. You know, um, yeah, when I saw that there was this guy, he, he actually filmed the making of them. He went in. He was one of the workers creating these facilities. And he did a um, very sneaky mobile phone film showing what's in each unit. You know, there's a kitchen here. There's a bathroom toilet there. Mm. But what's this gas line? Because it's not leading to anything. Mm. And the only possible thing is the air conditioner duct. Mm. So, you know, it's scary when we think what happened only 80 years ago yeah. is going about to repeat and it's going to be global instead of just what happened at Auschwitz mm -hmm. you know I don't like scaring people you know but my advice to people is if they say hey go to a wellness camp for your own good no think way. about what happened no there's way. no way known darling no. I'm there's no way known I'm going there either no. um so what are they for what are they expecting mm -hmm. you know and you know the CDC even has it on their website. They've got a zombie apocalypse scenario, what to do in yeah. that case. It's yeah. on the CDC website, for yeah. goodness sake. Yeah. You know, they said that they put it there as a joke. But no, you've got to remember don't. that the CDC does not joke about health. They are the centre of disease control. They don't make jokes. They only become awareness of what they know is coming. Yeah. You know, like... How did Gates know two years before the pandemic that it was coming? Hello. We all know the answer to that one, but let's play along with what he says. And, you know, <clears throat> some bat was going to do something mm. awful with someone yeah. and create this virus, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Before, oh I, before I forget, Linda, I just want to backtrack on something. I took s some notes here. You, you know... It's this question of of the translations in the Bible, where you're quite right. 
the translations are inaccurate, either by default or accident or deliberate, because we know a lot of the uh, Gospels are missing. The Gospel according to uh, Judas, the Gospel according to Mary Magdalena. Um, yeah, they're all not they're, there. They're, they're so missing. what did they say for them what, to leave them out? What do they know? <laughs> but, you know, this question, because I talk about it in my Power of Words talk, you know, where yeah. people say, you know, Mike, I've done all that. Ask and you shall receive. And I don't get nothing. And this is where the translation is wrong, because the original text says, ask as though you've already received. That's exactly right. And that's the thing. You've got to put yourself yeah. into that mindset that it has already occurred. Because, exactly. yeah. you know, I went to heaven for about five years and I learned it very quickly up there that if I wanted to be standing on the top of the mountain, I had to think that I was already standing there yeah. and I would be on the mountain. It was instant. As soon as I thought, there I am on the mountain, I was on the mountain. Yeah. So I know how this process works. Um, you know, on my YouTube channel, Dr. Linda Kramer, I've just done a couple of videos this week, how the universal laws work and how to make the law of attraction work mm. for us. And we've got to envisage it now in our present as if we're already mm. doing it. Yeah. Because if we say things like, I want to go on a diet mm -hmm. or – oh, tomorrow I'll start my diet, all the brain hears mm. is going on a diet. Mm. So it keeps us in that perpetual state of being wanting. needing to go, yeah. wanting to go on a diet. Yeah. So if we say, I want to be a millionaire, mm. then it's something that we're always always reaching yeah. for. So we'll always be broke. It's the, so uh, we say, I am yeah. rich. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Now, yeah. let me just go there, Mike. I did a experiment on myself oh, about three years ago. It was in January, the year before COVID, so it would have been 2019. Before I the, went up the to my flu uh, epidemic, you mean? That's right. right. <laughs> so <laughs> I went up to my doctor and I said, can you please weigh me today? And he weighed me. Now, I don't want to say how much I was, right? <laughs> but I will. I was 86 kilos. Right. Okay. And I said, for the next three months, I'm not going to come here, but please don't get rid of these scales and please don't tamper with them because I'm using them as an experiment over mm. the next three months. So three months later in um, – <clears throat> so I did it in March, so um, January, February, March, April. Mm. <clears throat> I went back to the doctor and I walked in and I said, are these the same scales as you had in January? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, I wish to weigh myself. And he said, okay, go and weigh yourself. And um, I weighed myself and he looked at me and he said, what have you done? I said, I have done nothing. I still eat cheesecake. I still eat chocolate. I'm eating mm. everything as I should, yeah. you know, as I do. I've done no exercise, but I now weigh 68 kilos. Mm. So that's 18 kilos, which is about 35 pounds if you're in America. Mm. So he looked at me and he said, what have you done? Mm. And I said, I'll tell you exactly what I've done. Mm. Every day for the past 12 weeks, I've made little post-it notes and I've put them all around the house with the words, I am. Mm. So when I go to the toilet and I close the door, on the back of the door is, I am. Mm. So as I'm sitting on the toilet, I'd be saying, I am skinny, I am thin. <laughs> I am skinny. Yeah. I am thin. I go to the fridge and there's another post-it note. I am skinny. I am thin. I go into my car and there's a post-it note. I am skinny. I am thin. I am thin. I yeah. am thin. Yeah. So even though you know, I was eating cheesecake, chocolate and all the other yummies that Linda loves, I still lost about 30-something pounds in, three, in 12 weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> this stuff really does work. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, but we've got to make it now because mm. I wasn't saying to myself, I am going to yeah, be no. skinny. Yeah. I have yeah. got a diet coming. Yeah. I was saying I have yeah. lost weight. Yeah. 
So I was and, making it like in the past tense that I'd already lost it. And this it. is the point mm. about if you want to manifest wealth. If you don't know what it feels like to be a millionaire, it will take longer to manifest because you've got to know that feeling. So how do you create that feeling? And I talk about this in The Power of Words. Go into a, a pound store and just be frivolous and pick things off the shelf without looking at a price tag. And this is the feeling of wealth that you don't have to worry about a price That's tag. That's right. And then yes. once, once you bought everything, take it to a thrift store and donate it. That's this, exactly this right. Is, this is wealth. And this way you build up uh, your ability yes. and faith in, in what wealth is, but to suddenly jump from from lack of to, to extreme wealth is a big ask, mm. a big, big yes. ask. Because it's the right. same as as the love thing, um, you know, to, to feel, and if you want love, you've got to know what it feels like to have lost as well, so you can experience uh, what real mm. love is. So you've got to do always do things in increments, unless you can really feel it within yourself and by the way as we head up into this fifth dimension most of us are beginning to feel more and so the manifestation yes. process ask and you shall receive or ask as though you've already received is much easier to manifest yes. and we were speaking now, about sorry about yep. this yesterday uh with healing um you know and we we spoke about uh the feeding of the five thousand and Greg Braden actually said it. This is just frequency. Creating more bread is frequency. And miracles mm -hmm. are only miracles when you understand the technology behind them. That's right. And the, Everything is science, yeah. but until you call it, well, it's magic until it's proven to be science. Yeah. Which yeah. is magic. It's all good, Dal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, well, I'll well, tell you what, we better get on. Yeah. We've been rabbit hole. Absolutely, on darling. So Absolutely. We'll go state side. We've got some great things. We've got some great things to talk about tonight. Yeah. So where are we going? Over to see Katarina we're first with going the news. New York to listen New to Katarina. New York, New York. And see what I love she her. Has to say. She's gorgeous. Yep. And uh yeah, she's got a couple of good stories here today. So let's have mm -hmm. a listen. Here we go. <laughs> My constantly seeking, constantly curious friends, I hope you're having a fabulous day and I hope you're ready to settle in and listen to the news that makes you go, ah! Hmm. Brr. Or simply, what the what? Why is no one else talking about this? Well, we're talking about it. We're talking today about Project Pegasus, headed by the U.S. government. This is a project that deals with time travel. You heard me. If you speak to a attorney in Seattle, Mr. Andrew Biasco, he will tell you all about his experiences as a child. He says that the government targeted children for this such experiment because they can deal better with um, transitioning from the past, present, and future. And he will also tell you that he went to the Ford's Theater on the night of Lincoln's assassination and also went to, to Gettysburg. Now, he was given papers in case he was caught at Gettysburg to hand off to a general in case they say, why is this child here from the future, I guess, or any such nonsense that they might try to arrest him for? Um, and he also uh, went to the Ford Theater to see the night that Lincoln was assassinated. And on that night, because he was sent back so many times, he actually ran into himself in the past. Talk about Back to the Future. Was it based on a real life happening? Now, they got, the government supposedly got this um, technology in the 1940s, in 1943, specifically when the genius uh, Nikola Tesla departed um, in a New York City hotel. He harnessed it, a type of energy that... Um, is latent and prevalent in the universe um, and allows you to time travel 
as well as go to different dimensions. So I don't know, where do you think you'll be traveling to if you were sent? From the government hiding the fact that time travel exists to them hiding the fact that UFOs exist? What else? Now, this started uh, long ago in the first account was in the 1500s in Germany. Of all places, there's even a wood carving of it, of a cylinder vessel flying in the air, um, returning fire from a um, land position. So here we go. Let's dive into UFOs. In Vietnam in 1968, Captain George Filler is a witness, as are many other soldiers, to um, saucers flying overhead of military ships. Now, these ships, since they did not know what to do, what else did they do? Since they were armed, they fired up at the UFOs, and guess what? The same ammunition that was sent up was sent down. Now, the... Um, Army did try to hide any evidence of this, and to this day, commercial pilots who claim to be interested in UFOs are also hurting their careers at advancing. Um, but George Filler, Captain George Filler, that was not the only time that he was a witness to UFOs. No, in um, the early 1960s in London, he was uh, re on a refueling mission when he was called over to Stonehenge um, and the Oxford area of England um, because overhead there was a ship so wide it looked like a cruise ship flying above these places. Now, what do you think? How has this not been better documented throughout history. And it seems like they're interested in war, particularly. Are they trying to help us? They were also said to be seen flying over at Afghanistan and also in Nazi Germany. So what do you think? Are they trying to help us um, stop wars? I hope they're on our side. Now they dub these flying aircraft enemy helicopters, or as they were dubbed in the um, Second World War, Foo Fighters. So rest in peace. That's our segue into saying rest in peace, Tyler Hawkins of the Foo Fighters. You were a great drummer and much appreciated. That's all for this week, my exquisite, beautiful, lovely, fun, kind, and wonderful friends. I hope you stay enthralled. I hope you stay excited. And above all, I hope you stay curious. There you go. This uh, Basaggio character, I listened to him several times with George Norrie on Coast to Coast AM. Um, mm -hmm. Very fascinating. It's not on, only him. There was a couple of other uh, quite famous uh, characters in the the space program there that, that were sent back. The only problem I have with his story is there that he never he said never once did he get to see uh, Booth shoot uh lincoln he said he either mm. got back there too early or too late and i just find a little problem with that um because i i think i don't know i think you would have at some point got there to see him uh do, do this and the other question is would you be allowed to change it imagine the and event. would you be able to talk about it that's the thing yeah especially if it wasn't the way in the history books yeah so you there, know, because that was lot. that was my impression. He saw something that was not in the history books. Yeah. yeah. And that's why he said, oh, I just wasn't there for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I think. <clears throat> but it was but a, the one, a fascinating yeah, yeah. interview, sorry, with him on Coast to Coast. Yeah. Down. I'm trying to think of the other guy. Um, I think the other guy um, is associates himself with uh, his name's Wilcock. And he does a lot of this stuff that never manifests. David Wilcock. David Wilcock. Yeah. I gave up listening to him because yeah. nothing he ever said come to pass. But mm. someone who he associates with was in that uh, uh, 
a time travel program. But there you go. Mm. Sorry, you was wow. about to say something, Linda. No, it's all good, Dale. Um, I had my friend Sally. She watches our show. Hello, Sally. Um, <clears throat> she's right up there with the alien technologies and she knows a lot about a lot of stuff within the a- alien communities. Mm. And we've had a debate whether there's going to be a nuclear war in the next two years because there's a lot of us that have had NDEs mm. that don't see too many good things happening in the next two years. Mm. Um, a lot of people are going to die all over the planet. And it's not just COVID because, hello, CDC um, wrangled the numbers there, didn't they? <laughs> you know. Um, so, But we're seeing like hundreds of millions dying all over the planet. So Sally and I were sitting having a coffee one day And she said, you know, you've got to remember that the aliens, they do stop our missiles being launched. Look what happened with North Korea. North Korea were testing all those missiles and they all blew up. There's heaps of footage around, even with the SpaceX Facebook satellite of of Musk, whatever was on that. Didn't work. And they they said, oh, it was a sunburst that caused it. Duh. You think they would know uh, tech if they're sending them things up, whether it's safe or not. No, this was uh, galactic intervention. Yeah. Sorry. So what I said to Sally was, remember back in the 1940s when they were testing all the nuclear stuff out at the atolls in the Pacific? They were bombing up all those islands. Why would the aliens allow them to successfully test nuclear warheads if they didn't want us to use it at some point? So Sally said, oh, but, you know, you've got to remember what they had back in the 40s. It didn't hurt anyone. It did nothing to the planet because it was out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But I said, yeah, but the aliens know that we're not just the only living life force on this yeah. planet. Whatever lives in the ocean yeah. out there would have suffered. Whatever lives on those atolls yeah. would have suffered, all that coral, all those, yeah. the sands and the shells, you know, the animals, the crustaceans yeah. that live in the shells there. They would have all suffered at the hands of the mm. nuclear um, testings back in the adults yeah. in the 40s. So it is a great debate, Mike. Yeah. You know, but I've seen the footage of the SpaceX rocket blowing up and you can mm. clearly see there's a UFO that blows something like a mm. laser light mm. into it and it's I can't say that's human no. technology, you know. So I... Yeah. I want to agree with Sally that they know that if there are nuclear wars, it's going to upset the stratosphere, the whatever else is fears mm. that we have mm. up in through the Van Allen belt and into yeah. the universe. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, they're virtually, I believe that they're still going to allow us to kill ourselves. You know, yeah. you that, know they're um, just sitting up there thinking what a dumb race of people they are. Let them do it. Is that the you know? uh, Van Allen belt that we no longer have the technology to get through so we can't go to the moon? Is that the same Van Allen belt? That My- would be the one that um, <laughs> apparently you can get through it wearing a T-shirt, <laughs> but we go to an X-ray clinic and they stick a damn steel plate in front of us to have an X-ray. And they run out yes. the room, that one. Yeah. Um, well, I just, before we go on to our first segment, I just want to add another thing to it uh, from the information mm-hmm. I, I've got, is that when we have NDEs or when we channel, we get uh, information of different possibilities. So a nuclear uh, explosion to wipe out the planet is one possibility. I often get the information that the galactics, for whatever reason, will not allow the destruction of the planet because... Oh, of course they won't because they, they need us. We're their stopping point, yeah. huh? um, Mike. And, and, yeah. all, and also because they consider other life forms, like the animals, who, who have got That's no say in Right. It. So yes. I understand why some people, they might be picking up on a, a, a parallel dimension, a, an alternative uh, Earth, alternative planet that runs parallel with ours, and that's what they're picking up with. Yeah. Fortunately, yep. I'm not presented with such horrors. I'm presented with the, uh, well, oh, oh yeah, Elon Musk, that's what you think. Boom, we'll stop that one. Well, <laughs> the other theory going on out there, Mike, is that the poles are about to switch. Oh, yeah, I think um, they have, actually. 
someone someone yeah i've researched the poles yeah. and they do move about six feet a year yeah. um you know so where the earth is here north and south it is switching six yeah. foot a year yeah. and as someone said to me um they said how far on that elastic band can it go yeah. before the law of balance takes over and it just goes boom yeah um you know, some someone I've been listening to, you know, just to see their perspective in this, they're saying we've got 11 months. And that could also be a possibility as to what I'm seeing in, like, 2023, 24. Yeah. Um, so there are, you know, it could, be a, it could be a meteorite that comes down. It could be a multitude of things. Another pandemic comes out. Hopefully not because we've already done that one, so why do it again? You know, it's like the old Diana. Oh, we killed someone in a car accident. We won't do that one again. <laughs> no, they released the flying monkeys. That's the next one. That's so. right, Alan. <laughs> you know, so, you know, there. whatever, I just hope it doesn't happen because I don't want to hurt or harm no. anyone on the planet. You know, that's my philosophy. No harm, no hurt to anyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but... Um, as long as we stay true to ourselves, because you, if you read Re Revelations or any of the other books in the Quran and the um, Kabbalah or the Bible, whatever you read, mm. they all say that those who believe and those who are good do ascend. Yeah. And I believe that hopefully that you and I are in this and the mix of people who watch our show, mm. you know. Um, so I... I don't believe that we have to abide by the Ten Commandments and all this other stuff, but as long as we're true in our heart and we believe what our true morals and values, etc., integrity is mm -hmm. of being a good, decent person, we're going to make it. You know, so that gives a little bit of faith mm -hmm. and hope to the people out there who think, "Oh God, I stole an, I stole a packet of chips once. Am I going to go to hell for that?" Yeah, I don't believe that because mm -hmm. to yeah. them that doesn't mean anything. You know, if it was for your own survival, they don't see that as that we, uh, because they up there they don't have money, they don't have currency. We've seen you know, uh, everything is shared. Many NDE yep. experiences that show there is no judgment and condemnation for anything like that. No. But, but look, let's get on with our first segment. This is yep. a compilation of ghosts. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to say the third one that's got no sound uh, is taken from a, a ghost. Uh, or a poltergeist that uh, throw things about in a bar. It's the um, Carlisle Castle Hotel in Sydney. And oh, it's there be you go. It's believed to be a disgruntled ex-employee um, who decides that uh, now that he's passed, he wants to have a bit of fun in the bar. So let's Ooh, look at these okay. little compilations and uh, yeah. make some comments. Here we go. <risa> es que te estoy enfocando a las boobies. <risa> ah, no mames. ¿Qué? ¿Pasó algo? ¿Qué pasó? No mames. A ver, ven. No mames, pasó algo, te lo juro que pasó algo, ¿eh? ¡Se mueve, se mueve! ¡Vete a la verga! Yo me voy. No mames.
So there we go. That was the three. First of all, didn't mm -hmm. get to hear most of that Spanish, but I know he was talking about her boobies as she covered them <laughs> up. Um, and um, what do you think? Because my first reaction would have been, as you've gone through that door, to look right where the spirit went through. But he didn't. He went sort of straight ahead, a little bit left, and then looked right. And um, um, a cynical mind would say that would have given a person enough time to get out the door. If it was a person. That's right. If well, they walked past the door yeah. and then they're standing behind the door, he yeah. comes in still filming ahead, yeah. they can run around behind him and go back out the door. Yeah. Yeah. And why was he aiming straight at that trolley yeah. as it moved? Yeah. That's the other thing, yeah. you know. But I have seen that on another site and, and there is a lot of um, people saying that it is real, you yeah. know, people who I respect in the field. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it was just him just yeah. mucking around, yeah. talking to her, um, you know, yeah. and but unless yeah. we're there, we yeah. don't really know, Mike, no, you know. No, I no. do like the fact that he showed the room with no exit doors. Yeah. That was good, yeah. you know. Um, if you're ever going to catch someone walking past a door, run yeah. in, film to show where yeah. they possibly could have escaped yeah. from. Yeah. But that room, there was no exit room. Unless yeah. they were standing at the door, He's walked in and that's given them that opportunity to run out, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I do like that one. Right. The second one. Let me just um, yeah. say something, Linda, here on this. I'm going to spin this yeah. round and hopefully you can see this door. Uh, right, you see that your door. Cat, look at it. Mate, right. your cats live better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that door there, okay, we... Uh, I keep it closed because the little buggers bring in mice and I can get them out, they get the mice out if they're there. If they come in this room, they've got yeah. everywhere they can hide. So yeah. I've got my resident cat ghost or ghost cat. And mm -hmm. what I'm saying this for is because I look and I see him go by. Now, I think, first of all, it's my little white cat because I see this white shadow. I open the door. I don't look left. I open the door and straight away I look to the right. Trouble is, yeah, because you're to the following right. where yeah. it was walking. You're following where you don't look around no. that way. That's no. where he went. That's where I looked. And about yes, three feet, four feet to the right is a brick wall. Can't yeah. go anywhere. So what I'm saying is, if that would have been me filming that, the first thing I would have done would have looked in and gone to the right, not. Yes. Looked anywhere else. That's what I doubt, but it still seems pretty genuine and authentic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'll go there, darling. I've been to a lot of hospitals in my life, um, whether I've been the one admitted or visiting other people there or just going there because I like going to hospitals. You know, people think I'm a freak, but hello, yes, I am, <laughs> um, because I like going there and talking to the ghosts walking around. And how many ghosts are at hospitals? Oh, my God. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds yeah. at every single hospital. Yeah. Um, you know, they're just waiting to be picked up. They're yeah. waiting for their relatives to come and visit them. Yeah. They don't realise that they've died, most of them. Um, so hospitals are a hotspot of activity, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but is this one a real one? I don't know. No. I don't know unless someone else was. It would have been good for someone else to be standing behind the cameraman with another camera yeah. to watch him go in. Yeah. And then you'd be able to see if somebody else was coming out. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Because that's what I would have preferred, yeah. Yeah. you know, to have the two camera angles yeah. of it. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, we've just got to trust at what they're doing um, and what they're showing. Yeah. And I do agree with that one. It, it does look paranormal to me. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't look, you know, gosh, people don't, don't do like um, proper written scripts anymore mm -hmm. for their footage you know they're just mucking mm -hmm. around doing stuff and they have this effect yeah. in the background yeah. um you know so yeah. we don't know if it's real or not no but as far as i can be a, a, what i've seen myself personally yeah. in my experiences mm -hmm. that could have been real yeah because that's exactly what they do yeah. they just walk past the door and you think yeah. what mm. You know, yeah. where did they go? Yeah. And there's nowhere they could go to. No. You know, no. so I, I do like that yeah. one. 
but it's the second one that I really do want to talk about. Mike. I was going to ask. This is your field. I wouldn't know if this is dust or or what. It's not dust. Yeah. It's actually a spider on the camera. Yeah. Okay. You can see his body and you can see his leg. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, you've got to remember now. This is how we debunk it. We have two optic lenses, our eyes. We mm -hmm. have two, right? Yeah. When you've got a camera, you've only got the one focal point. or a bug right yeah it's something crawling across the screen because you can see his leg yeah um yeah i've seen it a lot but yeah. it is good because yeah we've got to debunk these yeah. um so there you go that one um it's a cobweb or it's actually the um spider yeah. coming across the camera okay mm. third one the bottle shop oh okay. um <laughs> yeah yeah i love how it's not just one bottle that came out no, yeah even the ones at the back came out. Yeah. So, yeah, unless you've got two strings attached, so to just pull out the first. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's only the ghost idea of what they want to do. Yeah, that could have been his favourite beer or something. Yeah. And... You know, which comes us to the last one, the bar, the girl's leaning on the bar, yeah, yeah. the glass falls over the other side of the bar. You can see it's not her doing it. Yeah. Um, the force of it, you can see it's not just like unbalanced because it no. would just trip over and yeah. sort of like fly off the side. So I like that one as well, Mike. You know, um, she obviously wasn't expecting it because no. of her reaction. Yeah. Um, so I do like that one, you know, but the only one that I really – would debunk there is the bar one with that cobweb, the right. second one. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, if you want to replay this again later and have a yeah. look at that one, the second one, that's a cobweb. Mm -hmm. You know, so then you can say, sit there and say, right, now I know yeah. what a spider looks yeah. like when it's walking on the screen. Yeah. yeah. And tell us what you think. Yeah. Make, make some comments. But yeah. in the meantime, sure. let's go and look at our ghost photo bomber. Oh, yes. <laughs> and tell us what you think about this one. Here we go. Normal, you probably don't often worry about spirits photobombing the performance. The recording begins with a group of school-aged children dressed in their Sunday best on the stage of an auditorium singing. The song ends and the children take their bows as the audience applauds politely. Take a look at what happens. A moment before one of the boys finishes his bow, what appears to be a semi-transparent figure rises behind him. The translucent person is only visible for a second or two before the almost definitely human boy stands back up. Some viewers think the figure resembles the boy, so it could be some kind of camera glitch. Others have suggested it's a child's ghost who just wants to be part of the performance. Perhaps some tragedy took place in this building, causing the spirit to linger. Unfortunately, the clip is all too brief and we don't get a chance to see if there's really just another child standing at the back of the group. However, the transparent nature of the child does make for a troubling conclusion. Without testimony from the child himself, it's impossible to know what really happened that day. Hmm, well, I've got a couple of things here. Um, Go there. I think if that was a human child, he or she wouldn't have been standing directly behind that person. It would have been a little bit to the left or the right so that the face can be seen. Also, the bow wasn't synchronised with, with the human in front, so it couldn't, I think, have been a glitch or anything like that. So, um, because as the kid bows down, the one behind 
starts to lean up so it can be seen. My view is that's a photo bomber, a spirit photo bomber. What do you think, Linda? I stand well, it corrected. Reminds, yeah, it's all good. <clears throat> it reminds me of the famous war photo that we've had on our yeah. show where you've got the group of men, um, I think it was the last day of whatever it was doing, they were doing at the regiment, and they all took the group photo yeah. and the ghost photo was in there, the guy who got killed, yeah. and he was standing there without his hat on. Yeah. Um, so I thoroughly believe that this is someone who died, you know, a young yeah. kid, yeah. who wanted to be a part of that, like, ceremony, whatever yeah. they were doing, yeah. because – I watched it and I rewound it and I watched it and rewound it. There's a couple of things that I really do like about it. One, it's a boy that she's behind, okay, and two, she's a girl. She's got totally different clothes on. She's oh, yeah. dressed I'm, in the same that, yeah. the same black, like, um, what do they used to call them things? God, back in the 70s, it, it wasn't Bungle. a... You probably don't often worry. Had the same hair as a boy, we could say all this scientific, photographic yeah. rationale of technical issues as to what could have caused that. Yeah. But we can't because it's a totally different appearance of a person. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super. Well, let's Yay. march on because time waits for no man. Yeah. Let's have another yeah. look at time a, time, a time slip. This is the girlfriend time slip, I call it. So this is mm -hmm. a... A fascinating one. Here we go. Yeah. It was about a week ago and I was waiting to go get my girlfriend from work. And when I dropped her off, she said she was going to pick me up dinner when she got off and she was done. She's a server at a restaurant. I said okay and thought nothing of it. I was studying and watching TV when this happened. The emergency broadcast system was doing its monthly test or something and it popped up on the TV. And that's when my phone started to go off. The strange thing is that at the time I received a text message from my girlfriend, which I thought was weird because she never uses her phone at work. And the text message had some spelling mistakes, but read something like, Hey, I'm picking you up some food when I'm done, so don't eat anything. Love you. But as soon as the emergency broadcast system stopped, the text message disappeared from my phone, which I thought was odd. So I restarted it and thought, she probably texted me to come pick her up, and I don't want her to be waiting outside in the cold. So I called her work to make sure that she was still there and told her that I was on my way and when I showed up, as soon as she got in the car, she said without asking me anything that she didn't have enough time to get me something to eat so instead we can just go somewhere together. Me being really confused, I asked her if she texts me and she said no and then told me that her phone was off the entire time and reminded me that at work she's not allowed to use her phone. Do you think that lines could have been crossed? Or it just so happens that somebody texts their significant other the same thing that my girlfriend told me before her shift. She did get me something to eat after her shift and somehow she sent me a text message, but perhaps that message came from a parallel dimension. Mm, more than likely, especially with those uh, emergency broadcast signals. Um, from what I understand, they're, they're not on the same frequency as as other things, so... Who, who knows? And I think more of this is going to happen as we have this 
cross-dimensional uh, universes, as we mentioned last mm -hmm. week. I do believe CERN has... <laughs> I was about to say CERN. <laughs> ...has yes. a, a lot to, to do with this. I, I think our evolution, uh, our consciousness mm -hmm. is raised, has a lot that we could, uh, that our bandwidth of our eyes is now can see more than what it used to, let's say, 40 yep. years ago, 30 years ago. There's a lot of things to yep. take into account. But if I was a gambling man, I'd put my money on CERN being largely responsible, certainly for the Mandela effect that we spoke about. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we can't really say this is a time slip no. um, unless that's a future event that yeah. hasn't happened yet yeah. so we can prove it. Yeah. Um, what I think his last two words got it in a nutshell where he said parallel dimension. Yeah. Um, you know, because when veils start to fall, you know, we're in the three-dimensional world. When the veils start to fall between the dimensions, other things do come in and our yeah. stuff does go out yeah. into others. Yeah. So, you know, I love the Marvel movies. Oh, gosh, I binge on them all day. You know, I was watching the new Thor trailer today. Thank goodness that's coming out. Um but there's a scene in the first Thor where they're talking about this obviously made-up um, power. They call it the Tesseract or what was it, the Ether. But Jane, the girlfriend of Thor, she goes into a different um, parallel universe where this thing subsides and they're actually throwing things like down a stairwell and they disappear. Yeah. Um, and trucks are overturning by themselves without gravity. So is this all going like this conjunction? They call it the conjunction of planets. You know, we've got four planets right now in alignment. They're all lined up in the sky if you go out and look at them. I know Mercury, Mercury, Mercury and I think it's Pluto or one of them are in there, but there's four planets that make a perfect line at this point. Um, it's been for the last couple of nights. Right. Um, how do we know it's not some planetary alignment mm. um, contortion mm. of time and space? Yeah. You know, because that's what we've really got to look at here. Is it a contortion of time and space? Yeah, um, yeah so. Yeah. Well, it, it kind wow. of reminds me of um, this parallel crossings over, if you like, of Terminator 2, where he, Absolutely. he comes back to kill the guy who developed Skynet to stop yes. Skynet switching on. So there's hey, so many possibilities. Anything's Mike, possible you know? in this world, actually. Well, that's right. You know, I was just talking about that with somebody the other day. Would you go back in, um, do say something to Bill Gates, you know, and we were even talking about it. Well, why would you just start with Bill Gates? Why don't you go back to his family, yeah. you know, so then he's never even, yeah existed yeah. you know i don't like doing talking about doing anything of harm yeah. to anybody yeah. but you know what i say having coffee with someone when we're just joking that's a different thing mm -hmm. but um you know we've got to think of all these possibilities mm -hmm. because yeah. we know that they've got this technology out there yeah. you know they've yeah. been doing it for at least 50 or 60 years now yeah. or 70 years now yeah. Yeah. and you know i thoroughly believe that they got this technology mm. from the mm. um, alien craft sure. at yeah. Roswell in yeah. the 40s. Um, so what are they capable of? And then you look at other things mm. like the looking glass, mm -hmm. if you know what that one is, mm. the looking glass. Yeah. Um, wow, I don't even want to start on that because that will be a two-hour show then, Mike. <laughs> you know, but there's all these different possibilities yeah. out there of time contortion yeah. where things, weird things are occurring. Yeah. You know, I remember like six months ago, I even mentioned on our show, I was a day ahead of myself for three weeks. Yeah. I absolutely was having memories of things I'd done yesterday, but yesterday was still my afternoon. So I was having these, like now it's um, nearly 8, 8 p.m., mm. So I'd have these memories of yesterday at 9 p.m., like last night, and I'd remember, oh, yeah, you're standing in the kitchen, you've got these yeah. clothes on, you're making this cup of tea before bed, and I'd think, oh, my God, I'm wearing these clothes. This is yeah. this is actually happened the day before. Yeah. So I was a day ahead of myself. Mm. Um, 
yeah, but that lasted for about three weeks. Mm. You know, um, usually we just get that like feeling of, oh my God, I'm a day ahead of myself. You know, how how many times do you wake up on a yeah. Sunday and you think it's still Saturday or Monday? You know, um, guilty. That, the- that was this Sunday. <laughs> I woke up yeah. and thought it was Monday, and it was it yeah. was Sunday, and I had to but- gather my thoughts and think. No, hang and on a second. Long, yeah. yeah, I've got all so these things long, that I want to do, and no, I've still got to do that today, and then therefore yeah. today is Sunday. Yeah, but imagine what I had for three weeks, Mike, yeah. where I was a torture. day ahead of myself. Yeah. You know, even when I was doing my shows, I was yeah. sitting here Tuesday night, and we do our shows on Wednesday night. Yeah. And I was thinking, I even Tashi was annoyed with it when she says, Mum, what are you doing? And I said, yeah. I'm getting ready to talk to Mike. Yeah. She said, no, it's only Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, it's tomorrow because yeah. I'm a day ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking it was Wednesday when it was still Tuesday. Um, yeah, so it is interesting what they're doing, Dal. You know, I don't – I haven't got access to the high techie techy secret service type stuff where they're doing all these experimentations and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but I wish that they'd leave the natural – um, flow of the universe alone, you know, because they're messing with stuff that they don't know. And that's ultimately the thing that we really do need to yeah. discuss here. Yeah. No one knows the definitive answers of what's happening in the universe. Yeah. They're messing with things they don't know. And we're the one has consequences for it, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. It's all good, though. Hopefully they just don't create us as a black hole and we all get sucked into the <laughs> ether. <laughs> And that was, you know, when CERN t- first turned on, they said that was one of the possibilities, yeah. that CERN would create a black hole and the whole world would implode yeah. into a black hole. Yeah, but yeah. The, the thing is, Linda, actually, how do we know it hasn't? You know, we, ju- we, just, ha- we just have this, this You're idea. You're so good. How do we know it hasn't already we, happened? We have this impression of a, what a black hole is, but it, that might not be real. So how do we know with the flick of the button we haven't gone into a black hole, we haven't gone into an alternative universe, we just don't know. Hang on. Is that why now I've got all these zigzag white lines in the sky above me that look like chemtrails? (laughs) Because it's all this false matrix stuff, you know? This is a deep rabbit hole, It is a very deep rabbit hole. And I don't think we should go down it tonight because we've still got some really good stuff to watch and the time's getting away from us. But, yes, tell us what you think, guys. If you want us to go down this rabbit hole, please comment and let us know. Yeah. Okay? That might be an interesting interesting, uh, discussion show Mm -hmm. we should have. That's right. Just simply that. Yes. Yeah, and if you would like us to have a show like that, then uh, let us know. But it only works with your participation. Absolutely, so, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you watch this in a week or a month's time, please comment. Yeah, yeah. The comments are open. Let us know what you're thinking, guys. Okay. Yeah, well, we've already got one that said um, most definitely. <laughs> Let's uh, do it. That that was Melinda a while back. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so very good. All so, right. Well, let's just keep going. And yeah. uh, where are we going? The We're Angel going Called Freedom. An angel Called Freedom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is... Uh, a gentle but fascinating story. And in the realms of stories that people speak about angels, this is, uh, even for the sceptic, is quite a believable story. Mm. And I particularly like the bit about the scrolls because many people who have had NDEs have mentioned scrolls. I won't say Mm -hmm. any more. Let's just run this and, and let us all know what you think. Hi, I'm Roland Wharton. I want to tell you about a conversation with an angel that changed my perspective on God and my future trajectory. I was part of a 40-day prayer and worship conference in Dallas, Texas that was happening outside uh, in the city. Powerful, powerful time. Uh, I'd left the tent and was um, walking along a grassy area and I was drawn supernaturally to a man that was standing there in the crowd. As I was going towards him, not even knowing how my feet were carrying me, uh, we began a conversation. He looked like an older man to me, and I assumed someone that was just gathered there to pray and worship with us. As I got closer to him, the presence of God increased around me. I was aware of this. I noticed several things about him, his piercing blue eyes, 
he was carrying a backpack with what looked like scrolls coming out of the side. And, and as I came and began to engage conversation with him, he told me point blank that he'd been sent, sent there to be with us. Um, I talked more with him and he opened the scrolls from his backpack, opened them out. It looked honestly to me like a map that had been marked with Sharpie. I saw various states marked there uh, and I'd seen a route that he'd taken to get to Texas. Um, one thing I want to say to you, it was very surprising to me. Um, my natural mind was trying to reason through this encounter while my spirit man was absolutely alive with the presence of God. And the presence of God was increasing as I began to engage in conversation with this man. I assumed he was a traveler at this point, but my spirit man was telling me that this was an angelic encounter. As our conversation continued, I began to press in and said to him, I am praying for the angels that carry revival to be released in the United States. He looked directly in my eyes and said, we are already here. This was a moment where I began to weep. I realized I was looking not at an older gentleman that was visiting, but an angelic visitor from heaven that had been sent to us. As we finished our conversation, we talked about um, some of the things that God was going to be doing. And uh, as I began to walk away, he said, remember me, I am freedom. Walking away from that conversation, just so aware of the presence of God in a profound way. I kept glancing back and he'd watch me walk. And suddenly one moment I looked back and he'd gone completely disappeared from sight. I knew that I had a conversation with an angel, an angel called freedom. An angel called freedom. What do mm. you think, Linda? Good. What happened, Mike? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. I thought you were going to keep talking and then you uh, stopped. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no. Um, your your views on this, what do you reckon? Well, sweetie, um, let's just go there. I thoroughly believe that there's angels because I've seen them of with course. their wings yeah. and their feathers. Mm -hmm. We've all had um, messages from people, whether it be a feather floating down to finding coins or feeling that breeze from a loved one in heaven, etc. So, you know, it's very, very, very common that um, whatever you'd like to call the higher supreme beings – you know, whether they're ascended masters, angels, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, etc., they can all interact with us. And it also then surmises that when they interact with us, they will take on whatever form they feel we will trust. Yeah. And that's why when people have an NDE and they meet Jesus, because they pres presume mm that it is Jesus, because it, not very many NDEs where they say, he told me his name was Jesus. Right. So, you know, I saw a white man, he was wearing a robe and he had sandals on. It was Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's only an assumption. So, but this one said, my name is yeah. freedom. Okay. So that's where you've got to look at the word freedom. What does it mean? Not yeah. just in our language of what no. we speak now. No. You know, you've got to go back into ancient texts yeah. to find out what the true meaning of freedom actually stands for. Yeah. And, you know, I'm never going to assume my own interpretation of it. But when we talk about freedom on a, like, an angelic level, yeah. it means that we have free will. It means that we have our own decisions that we can make. Mm that we don't get condoned, mm. we don't get criticised and um, condemned mm. for our actions. Yeah. That's the sort of freedom yeah. that I think this angel was talking about yeah. Yeah. Um, in this visitation that he mm. had. You know, we mentioned the records, the uh, um, Akashic Catholic. records. Yeah. You know, um, I've never really researched them that much, um, but as you said, a lot of people have seen um, a hall full of scrolls yeah. when they do their life review. Mm. I personally didn't see any scrolls um, where we can write our own life reviews, or, I'm sorry, our life contracts mm. and life lessons. But that doesn't mean just because I didn't see them, they don't exist. 
Um, you know, I'd never be that egotistical to no, say no. I saw everything when I was there. So, so I love it when I hear people talking about these different parts of the universe, heaven, whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. Um, even the appearance of angels mm. that I didn't see because it gives me that intrigue to delve deeper into my own knowledge, wisdom, yeah. as well as the research and yeah. study that I do on the subject, mm. you know. Um, yeah, so I love his story. Yeah. 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 Good well, on him. At, th at this point, I would like to once again call out to anyone who's had a spiritual experience, you've met an angel, had a near-death experience, Anything like this, even a time slip, um, yeah. you know, what we'd like you just to talk for five minutes into a camera. I'll put some little video clips behind it and mm -hmm. um, we'll get your stor story on the show. Um, Absolutely. Contact Mike. He's, yeah, we're obviously on Medium Mike Cavalli. Contact him or if you want to contact me and so I can send it over to Mike so he can edit it up. Mike's a better editor than I am because I'm not techie techie. <laughs> But, you know, we'll put you on our show. Yeah. If you don't want to, you if you want to just write a Word document and send it over to us, then we're happy to receive those as well. You know, if you, yeah. some people are camera shy, they don't have the confidence to speak in front of cameras. Yeah. Um, not like Mike and I, myself, we've got no shame in that. Um, but, you know, you may yeah. feel a little bit insecure or doubtful. So put your words onto a Word document or even yeah. just – open up a private message on mm. Messenger um, yes. through Facebook and just explain, hey, I had this experience, this yeah. is what happened. Yeah. So Mike or myself can read it out live yeah. on air so then you can stay anonymous if you wish. Um, you know, a lot of people do want to stay anonymous. They don't want their family sure. and friends to find out, yeah. you know. Look at what I went through with my own family and friends, you know. Um, mm. They're still criticising and attacking me every damn day over it. So... You know, they um, they have their own opinions, and I respect that. We all do. So if you do have any sort of, you know, little icklings about not wanting your name out there, just write it as we'll a private it message to Mike and myself. We can do it anonymous, and I'll just read it out as a mm. story from a viewer. Yeah. Okay? Perfect. Unless you just want even – well, I've even done videos where I say the initial A. Yeah. You know, because that could be anyone on the planet. There's no location yeah. mentioned. And I think you know, we've had a comment from someone called A. I, I, yeah, I'm quite uh, happy to, for purposes of uh, privacy, we've changed the name type of thing. That, that's fine. Absolutely. That's no Absolutely. problem. Absolutely, The important, yes. important thing is that we want to hear your stories. We want to hear. Yes. Because there are so many out there. And I know the viewers do have stories. Um, and are just a bit hesitant coming forward. So please don't be. We're, we'll make it as private or as public as, as you want it to be. Yes. So, yep. And on you know, that note, any sort of, yep, 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 on yep. that note, it's all we, good. Where are we going now? We're we, going over to Raymond Kinman. Yep, on his uh, fascinating NDE story. Um, yes. I'll say no more. Let's just listen to this. Let's just play it. And we have some. It was a martial arts accident. I got clobbered in the head really hard. And it caused me to go into convulsions and my tongue buckled back into my airway and I couldn't breathe. So um, I died. And I was not conscious for that part of it. I lost consciousness and went face down on the concrete. I say I lost consciousness, but there was no break in my awareness. It wasn't like going to sleep and waking up. It was, I was here and then I was not. As I tell my story, it's going to sound like a progressive series of events. And it's going to sound like I'm talking about pla like places and things. But when we leave our bodies, there is no, there's no space. There's no up, down, sideways, back and forth. None of that exists anymore. And there's no time either. And what it feels like to be in a position of no time, no past or future, is it's a perpetual unfolding of now. And I think most people have had that experience in small ways. We, we've all experienced that. Maybe in dance or a brilliant musical performance. To be in a perpetual state of perpetual unfolding of now is an absolutely liberating feeling, powerful feeling. 
And I'll describe what it feels like to not have a body because I didn't have a body either. I was a floating sphere of awareness. That's the best I can do to describe it. So when I left my body, I didn't know where I was, what was happening. I didn't remember the accident. There was no place or stuff. I, I was in a what I can only call a void and there was no color, there was no light, there was no dark, there was no gravity, no sensations. It was nothing. I was really disoriented. I didn't know what was happening. And I still could reason. I, I still had the, the, the powers of, yeah, I was trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, it frightened me. And, uh, and the fear started ramping up and amplifying. And it, I got more and more scared. It started getting out of control. I really like, kind of lost it. But I remember thinking, I've lost my mind. I'm going crazy. Somehow that brought me a little bit of peace. And then my next thought was, if I'm going crazy, there's nothing I can do about it. And I just, I let go. I released. When I released, all that confusion stopped. Just stopped. Then the pleasurable sensations began. It was replaced. It started simple, like, contentment and peace and, and then that started ramping up and compounding and getting more and more intense and I'm a perpetual unfolding of now and I'm a floating sphere of awareness and it ramped up and up and up until I was in pure utter bliss. I did become aware of a point of white light, intense, intense, brilliant gajillion times brighter than the sun, a little point of white light, and it was absolutely beautiful. It was alive. It was like breathing, and somehow I knew I had to go there. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew I had to go there. As I approached the light, it got bigger and more intense and more beautiful and more loving, and it sucked me in and absorbed me for me. I was the light. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. All of us have, have lost loved ones. Most of us have lost pets. I was nine years old, and my dog, Skippy, was there. So my dog was there. And again, remember, I didn't know I was dead. And now he didn't have fur and legs and stuff, but it was Skippy. He was also a floating sphere of awareness. And he absorbed him. We absorbed each other. And we were communicating. There was communication going on. But it was perfect communication. It was like telepathic. So here's the headline. Your loved ones, your pets, they're there. They're still there. And you'll see them again. And I found myself standing in front of these golden columns. And I remember, there's no stuff there. The best I could do is say, maybe it's made out of light or something. And they were stacked in such a way that it felt like it was an entrance to something. But I didn't go down there and I didn't enter it, so I don't know what it was. Next headline. I was greeted by a being of some sort, a spirit. He absorbed me and I absorbed him. We became one and we fell in love. He then showed me how absolutely critical my purpose was in creation. I was told very clearly what our purpose is. And your purpose is to love. It's that simple. Um, there, everything is made out of love. This is an expression of God's love. And if you don't like the word God, use whatever word you want. But I, I can tell you one thing for sure. There was no judgment. There was no atonement. There was nothing that I had ever done that was completely forgiven. And I guess the last part was um, this being who absorbed me and I have this download said, now I want to introduce you to my creator. And it was like this one big floating sphere of awareness and we were singing and I'll never forget this. This was so beautiful. It was worship. That's the best word I can describe it. And it was about love. I know a lot of people have a fear of death. I have zero fear of death. Matter of fact, I want to go back. I, mean, I can't wait. I'm, I'm in no hurry. You know, um, you're not going to die until you fulfill your purpose. So uh, we told me, when I say we told me, we, that it's not my time and I, I had to go back. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going back. 
got this all wrong. And then once again, I was told it's not your time. You have to go back. But you can come back anytime, anytime you want. Once you've fulfilled your purpose. Hmm. Beautiful one. You know, I'm, I'm going to nick a line or two for my next med guided sure. meditation that I do. <laughs> Floating as a sphere of awareness. And That's absorbing right. and being yes. at one, you know, and all this business of no judgment. And it gave me the thought, never mind on the earth plane, us not judging others. We should take time not to judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and be gentle to ourselves, be kind to ourselves, yes. and not judge ourselves. I think that's the first stage. Then we can better, easily not judge others. Over Absolutely. You, well, the light, the words that I love the most, but even though it sounds funny, going crazy. Mm. When he was talking about how he was going crazy, how many people, when they're starting to wake up, they actually think they're going insane or nuts? <laughs> You know, yeah. it's it's phenomenal how many emails I get where people say, oh, my God, I've been a really good sleeper all my life. Now I'm not sleeping. I'm having nightmares. I'm getting headaches. I'm doing this. I'm sweating. I'm having all these chills. I'm getting ringing in the ears. I'm having all this anxiety, feeling of like a tidal wave's coming. Yeah. What the heck's going on? And I just look at them and I say, it's normal. Yeah. <laughs> it's normal to yeah. feel yeah. like you're going crazy. Yeah. And you know, they, they can't fathom it at that point because they're just starting to wake up. But, you know, it's like the catalyst, you know, the, that caterpillar that it cocoons itself, how did it feel when its wings started to transform, you yeah. know? Obviously there would have been a bit of pain in there that they go through in sure. that process, yeah. Yeah. you know, and it is an extremely painful emotionally and physical pain yeah. that we go through in that catalyst between the grub to the butterfly effect yeah, yeah. um so of course we go crazy you know i love how he said that he was completely forgiven mm. this is where we get our unconditional love coming in yeah. where we don't judge others and you know it starts with within us if we can't forgive ourselves mm -hmm. and to judge ourselves how do we ever show that in others? Yeah. How can we ever love someone unconditionally yeah. unless we accept ourselves, all flaws and all, and we don't judge mm. ourselves? Mm. You know, because this is where we talk about mental health. Mm. Most mental health is based on past experiences yeah. where we either feel embarrassed, we're shamed, or we feel guilty yeah. about something that happened in our past, yeah. and we're hanging on to that trauma. So, you know, the best way to say, you know, one of the lines I say, the past is the past. I forgive myself for what I did. Yeah. I have no... I have no way of changing the past. The only thing I can do is to change the future so it doesn't reoccur. Yeah. So give me the strength, oh, mighty God, and the heavenly angels. Yeah. Give me that strength to recognize what I've done in the past that I don't want to do in the future yeah. so my future does not have the same trauma as mm. my past. And, and, to, and sorry, to remember also that lessons – our lessons are not life sentences. Of course they're not. You know, so you know? we hang on to something that we done all oh, years and years ago. 35 but, years ago, 14 days and 16 hours ago, yeah. I did this act. But we're not that same person so, anymore. We're that's exactly actually, right. Actually, biologically, we're a different person. Every 10 years, our cells from 10 years ago are not the same as they are now. Certain yep. bodily organs die off and regenerate as this, this this process. So we are a different yep. person. The food we eat makes us a, a different person. So absolutely, yeah, and you know it's 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 very complicated. And and as, as Zach says here, it's the past. I've got uh, light in the way. Is is this past lives too you can change also? Well, we, we actually um, yes. did healing yesterday and um, we started off the healing session um, going into the universe, being one with all that was, is and will be. 
and asking for them to be healed. And we said, start healing yourself on something that you know you can do that's not yes. too painful that can be done. And then after this, during this meditation, we asked, uh, we invited actually the Holy Spirit in to heal the bigger problems. And then we discussed it. And this one lady said she asked for healing of her past. So that, and she didn't mean when she was a child, she meant actually her past lives. Past lives, yeah. So I yeah. Mean, that was a very interesting. Well, yeah. there, are, there are people out there, Mike, who do quantum healing. Yeah. Uh, my friend Sue got into it. She was on our show about a year ago. Yeah. Um, she got into it. Um, I'll say I had a issue with the behaviour that I used to do. That's all I have to say. Okay, it could be just like I get embarrassed. It was something like that. So she went into a past life through this quantum physics that she was learning. And she took me through hypnosis back into that era, back in the medieval times, and she corrected what I did where I, where I started learning that behavior. So there are techniques out there, yeah. Zach, if you do want to get into it. Mm -hmm. um, have a look at quantum healing. That's a good start, place to start yeah. um, because they do do hypnotherapy where they take you into life and they create – what they actually do is they create a new reality because in quantum everything is present in the now. Yeah. So right now I'm in 1408 as a peasant girl in an um, English castle. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go right now and change the outcome of something that you did back then in that life. So I did it and yeah. it made me – because I could not stand up to people. That's the thing. I didn't like confrontation with people, I'll be honest. So that's what Sue did for me. She took me back in where I was um, had an issue with a with a knight. He was in armor, so I stood up to him. And now that's why now I've got this assertiveness mm. where I can because I've healed that hurt from like in our life mm. six hundred, eight hundred years ago. Mm. You know, um, mm. so it, it can be done. You know, it's like quantum healing. But we can do it also through our meditation. Yeah. We can also do it by calling mm -hmm. in the angels. Mm -hmm. There are other ways of doing it. It doesn't just have to be what I was just talking about with Sue, mm -hmm. what she does. Mm -hmm. But there is hope out there yeah. that we can heal, like generational hurts as well. Yeah. You know, ancestral, oh, my God, look what happened to my yeah. grandfather type stuff. Yeah. Don't ever let somebody, what happened to your grandparents, <laughs> Don't bring that into your own life yeah. because now you're creating that same reality again. Yeah. So as soon as we say what happened to my grandfather happened to him, he's separate to me. Yeah. yeah. My life is my life. So we take that power, we take that authority, yeah. and soon enough those traumas and hurts that we were holding on to, they've got nowhere else to go but to go away. Yeah. Yeah. And So there you go. Before we move on to the work of Terry White, I'd just like to add – and we can also stop a chain of events occurring by simply doing something today our future self will thank us for. Absolutely. It's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to do a video. I'd like to do it tomorrow, but yeah. I don't think it will be. It'll be on Friday. Um, Dr. Linda Kramer on YouTube. Um, how would the angels deal with this? That's what it's going to be called. Mm. How would the angels deal with this? So, you know, when we look at life stresses mm. and dramas and, oh, my God, I can't believe this thing's happened to me type scenarios, what would the angels do mm. in, if they were in that perspective? What would they do if they were in my shoes? Yeah. So that's going to be a good, a good video I'm going to do. I'll probably do it on Friday. Yeah. Um, what would the angels do in this instance or something I'm going to call it? What yeah. would the angels do? Okay. about it you know mm -hmm. yeah okay. yeah because when we put it into perspective it, you know it all it all changes yeah. when we put it into that perspective yeah yeah there okay. you go okay well let, let's finish off with the work of terry wycross um yep. british guy this time um let's see what he has to say and um tell me what you think yeah. old school he's old school medium a bit yeah. like myself you know he's he's of that <laughs> you know look he wears you know 
representative yeah. close to do a Zoom meeting. <laughs> but yeah. Here we go. Let's have a look. Okay, so Jenny, can I ask you, are you understanding this, inf this information? Yes, I do. Do you understand her being like a recluse? Yes. And dressing from a bygone era? Yes. And did she have cats as well? No, she, she didn't like cats. She didn't like cats? Okay, and so the other person who can understand um, was Julia, I believe. Is that right? Yes, yes. So, I understand. She was very old-fashioned in her dress. She was very reclusive. She did not like technology. She often said she'd been born into the wrong era. And yes to the cats. Yes to the cats. I want the cats because I know I can smell cats around me. That's why I felt I had to talk about cats as well. Um, yes. So you, you understand this lady. She's uh, she's quite a character though. And, and she doesn't like letting people in her house. She doesn't want people to come in her house. Can you follow that? That's true. And yes. But I, I feel that the dress, the dress is really from a bygone era. But I feel as well that I don't want to allow anything to do with electrical things in my house. I don't want anything electric in my house. Can you follow that? It, it wasn't that she didn't want it. It was that she didn't understand it. and She wasn't good at learning how to use new, new technology. Okay. Even but, new television remotes. Yeah, I, I just know that. I'm happy with what I know and what I like, but she's family, but she's quite hard to get close to. Can you understand that about her? Yes. She's very, I, I feel she, yes. she she's, she, it's almost gives me the sense she's closer to her animals than she is to her family. And she's just, she just yes. feels very distant. And, but I also feel she doesn't like letting people throw over the threshold of her home. Can you see that? That's right. But I feel as well that she gives me the feeling that if you did go within her house, that it's not, she gives me the feeling it wasn't as well kept as perhaps it should have been. Can you understand that about True. her? I, there's just, there's yes. just a sense here of, um, of it being a little bit chaotic. And she, but she was very resistant to anybody helping this lady. I just feel so resistant to, to wanting help from anybody. And she, yes. would, and she would never ask for it. You understand that. I also sense quite a strong religious beliefs with her as well. Yes. Can you follow that? And yes, I just because I, I had a feeling of she doesn't want certain things in her house, almost as if that's the devil's work. That's a very strange thing for me to say. Which no, not I understand that. No, there you go. Very, for, for me, I know it shouldn't make any difference. Uh, and I've got to do a, actually, Skype reading this week. But these gallery readings, uh, conference call readings, um, I admire people that can do it. But, you know, all this, you've got to look to see, put their hand up. And to me, it, do, it doesn't wash. I like that audience that congregation mm. where you can see the hand clearly and you can move over there or move around but just looking through you know hollywood squares you know people yeah you no know, this one but he done very well considering you know he's yes. got loads of people there. yes he gave some great evidence so i yeah. take my hat off to him and you know this is the thing mike you know i say it a lot and i'm going to say it again tonight when people go along to see mediumship shows and a medium is somebody who sees spirits from heaven, okay, they pop in with us. So Mike does it, I do it too. So what happens is the people who come as a client, I'll call them a client, they go along to these shows, they pay their money, they have these expectations of A, who will pop in and B, what they'll say. Oh, I want to hear from my mum tonight. I want to know if she thinks this new boyfriend I've got is good for me. So they want their mum and they want her to talk about something specific. Yeah. So we've got to take away our ego when we see a medium and allow that spirit to come through with what messages they want 
to say to us instead of what we want them to say to us, yeah. okay? Because, you know, he, he was talking about the cat and it made me giggle a little bit because I've had a lady who showed me a cat and she was holding it out like this, okay, like a fluffy cat. Yeah. And I said, what's the thing with the cat? And the lady said, oh, my mum hated cats. Yeah. And I said, so she's showing me how much she hated the yeah. cat. Yeah. It's not that it was her cat or something, but she was showing me that she hated cats. So I had to, you know, you've got to understand the pop that they come through with. You know, she's holding this cat. And you know, anyone would say, oh, your mum's got this cat. She loved her cat. Mm. But it was the fact that she hated cats. So she's showing what she hated. Yeah. So then that client yeah. could relate to it. Yeah. So we've got to take our ego out of that. Sure. And you know, let them be the ones who dictate the reading instead of what the client wants to receive at the reading. Yeah. Yeah. Good. There you go. Well, yeah. that's it. We've run out of time. Yeah, we're going to finish on time for once, Mikey. Thank Ish. you so Ish. much for keeping <laughs> us on track. Ish. Yeah. So, so good, guys. Listen, guys, once yeah. again, please tell us your stories, your angel stories near-death experiences out of the body, shared death visions, deathbed visions, saved by an angel, anything like if that. You were, if you were zapped up by a, you know, you were driving down Highway 51 and you saw all these white lights and you got floated up into an alien ship yeah. and had some weird experiences up in the ship, yeah. you know, you wake up three hours later in your bed, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be to that extreme, obviously, no. even if it's just, hey, I was outside and I saw these white lights and I uh, checked radar and there was no camp, there was no mm. flights around, I was doing all this. Just be, you know, let us know because the more that we share these paranormal mm. stories, you know, even if you just saw a ghost once yeah. and I saw something out of the corner of my eye yeah. and then whatever happened after it, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, we all sit there and we expect that our stories have to be on some sort of competition. No. There is no. absolutely no competition with paranormal, guys. No. So even if you think, oh, my story is not really that worthy, you know, it's only a little thing that happened to me, it means a lot to mm. other people mm. when we debunk it and we mm. put the story behind the story. The moral, you know, why did this happen to you? So. Yeah. Please share your little stories because to someone yeah. else, yeah, it means yeah. so much. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. I'll lead by example. I'm going to put my little quasi NDE, more of a out of the body adventure rather than an NDE. I think it was somewhere in between. I was about five, six years of age. I'm going to do that. That'll be ready for about two weeks' time. And yeah. I'll encourage other people to do it. So, yeah. That's so, right, Mike. You know, I might even do a little one about the angel that was in my house when yeah. six people saw it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it gives people just an idea of what we're looking for. You know, yeah. maybe if you and I both do it. Yeah. You know, that'd be a good little thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I'll get that done. Yeah. But, guys, just make sure it's only about five to seven minutes because, as you can see, we usually do about seven videos a night mm. um, and we're here for an hour and a half. Ish. So, yeah, <laughs> ish. <laughs> And so, if we don't have technical problems or Linda just keeps talking all night. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And so I'll leave you oh. all with this thought. So the same God that made the mountains, the oceans, the rivers, took one look at you and said, the world needs one of you. Absolutely. That's, that's how important you are. So absolutely take that. We are you. all we are all born the same. We all die the same. Yeah. We are all therefore special. Okay. No one is better than anybody else. No. No one no. is lesser than nobody than somebody else. No. It's only what society does through giving us titles mm. of job descriptions and pay yeah. that we receive. Yeah. Oh, that guy earns a hundred thousand dollars more than me. He must be so good. No, it doesn't mean that at all. Yeah. We are all the same, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. And, you know, I'll tell you one thing that I've learned from my near-death experience is that we're all one. Yeah. We all beat as one heartbeat. Yeah. And when you think, my God, I am that um, drop within the ocean. I am so special because I'm so needed 
and required by the universe. So what am I going to emit out of me to create that beauty? Yeah. Because it does all start with within. So, you know, beauty within. Let's look at that this week. A wow. Perfect way to finish. Linda, I'll see you next oh. week. Good people. Yeah, darling. Have Love a great you all, evening. guys. Yep. From On the, uh, Brisbane, Australia. Down under. Love you all. <laughs> well, mate, if the poles switch, I'll be up in the Northern Hemisphere next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be swimming somewhere in yeah. a black hole. <laughs> I'll see you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Take care.